Costello, who's mm. going to get us underway shortly, just waiting for the clock to set and the timeouts to be added to the scoreboard. Liam's joined by Ryan Goodet of Canada. And it's Brazil in the yellow who come up with the first possession. And Tanaguchi drives to the line. Bruno with that pass to Tanaguchi worked out really well. Good spacing for Brazil on their first play. Yep. And Colombia will have the possession arrow. So if there's no held balls, they will get the inbound at the start of the second quarter. Oh, and uh, number 10 there, Uriel Rodriguez taking a uh, fall to the floor. Vargas took that one coast to coast. It was a nice pick to seal off the, the key so that uh, the defender couldn't get through, giving Vargas a, an untouched try. These are teams that know each other pretty well. Yes, although Brazil have, well, both teams have had uh, disruption to their plans uh, in the, the run-up to, yes. to this game. Brazil, in particular, had two players uh, uh, with two weeks before the tournament that weren't able to make it. One had a stroke in training, which was uh, Yes, the other one terrible. chose not to come. We don't know why. Um, and then, of course, they had the uh, classification situation where they had a 1-5 classed up to a 2. Yep. So that hurts their, their lineups. And Colombia um, have also had their problems in classification with uh, Harold Z Zalazar being classed out. Yeah, so he, you know, he's kind of more the future of the program. They weren't counting on him to be the guy this time. They're, okay. they're trying to give him an opportunity to play some international ball and, and you know, like I said, be the future. And He's yep. not going to get that opportunity. No, that's that's a shame, but uh, we have classification for, for good reason in yes. this sport to uh, make it fair competition as uh, Brazil through Tanaguchi again go into the lead. So we're seeing a Roscoe double teamed like crazy, which has given Vargas a lot of opportunity to work his way up court. Yeah, and Vargas had a great game this morning against Japan. I think, uh, pretty sure he went Iron Man. Played all uh, all 32 minutes of uh, he, he's really come a long way. Time. You know, he when he was an, a young player, you could see some potential in him. Uh, made mistakes, just as we all do when we're you know learning this and playing it, playing against competition that is very challenging. Yeah, it's but he's certainly he, intense. He's really developed. He's uh, yeah. made, it was Made good. great strides. Very, very good to watch. And uh, Bruno, number three. Yeah, Damasino. Oh, just gathered that in in time, uh, Gonsalves. And Tanaguchi feeds Damasino, and he goes in backwards to make it a 3 2 game. Ask wipes him for a foul. Yeah, doesn't wipes matter. The sweat from his brow. No, it would only have been a penalty try anyway, wouldn't it? He <laughs> all but got punched in the face, but a penalty try is all that comes out of it. Yeah. That, to me, is our, our craziest rule that has never been dealt with. Nice separation there by Neme, number yeah. seven, yeah, to give Vargas a pass. Good outlet pass. The referee, Liam Costello, is not happy with him there. Oh, because he didn't set the ball down. No, he bounced it and the ball rolled away. That's his warning that he'll get a delay of game. Yeah. yeah. Nice that he got a warning. Yes. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's good refereeing. One, to stamp your authority, and, and yep. two, to you know, give the players at least uh, at least one chance to, to transgress before you penalise them. That's a defensive win to have Neme holding Joppa Tamaguchi down there at the line, but Brazil able to capitalise. Mm -hmm. Looks like Neme's got a, uh, an issue with his chair. He's not calling for a wheel. He's not. No, just an axle issue, I think. Oh, no, the wheel's coming off. Something's rubbing. Maybe he's tightening up that leg strap. We've, we've had a couple of games uh, today where the, uh, the mechanics have been on the court more than the athletes. <laughs> so many chair issues. Uh, testament to how hard these guys are hitting. Yost and I watched a game this morning where 
Riley Bat was almost at half court, got hit, a wheel popped off, but he had momentum toward the dry line, he, he told me and he about kept that. going. Yeah. Only, he right, only Riley could do that. Now, I've That's seen phenomenal. a lot of wheels pop off, but I've never <laughs> seen someone go almost half court without it and score a try. <laughs> phenomenal. Neyme in for uh, Colombia, the uh, captain of the team. Bruno smart to pull back there, number three from Brazil, instead of making that hit. Yes. Oh. Roscoe reached the first time, got away with one, but this time he got caught. <laughs> yep. Gonzalez, uh, for some reason, has an issue with... <laughs> Perhaps he wanted to call last time there. He's having a word with the referees. The referees are setting him straight, and Orozco is uh, in the box for illegal use of hands. So, uh, Brazil will get a new them. 40 seconds. It might have been something else he wanted to point out. Yeah. This guy's grabbing my chair, or he's hit me in the face three times. Are you going to call it? You know, with it, you want to plant a seed for a referee to be thinking about something without off-putting the, them so that they don't want to, they don't care about your concern, right? <laughs> yep. If you yell at them for it, they're, they're going to be less likely to be trying to help you out. So Damasino sends Gonzalez to the uh, be the trap on the penalty box to force Orozco to be the inbounder, and that's uh, that's the consequence. You couldn't see that. That was all, that all took place out of picture, but uh, the end result is Orozco will uh, be the inbounder, which is a, a small win for Brazil. Score is five to four. We got to get it in though. Here we yeah. go. Finds Neyme, who in turn gives it to Va Vargas. Julian Vargas, number 11, makes the try. Little love tap there for number three, Bruno. I've never heard it called that great interception from Neyme. Excellent wow. play. Colombia's going to be happy about that one. Very much so. Yep. And that gives them their first advantage of the game. Yeah, levels it up, up one. At five apiece. So they've six five. Yeah, they just took a little while to score it. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna get a hit there. Tanaguchi, can he oh, reach it? He does. He Rodriguez does. did a nice job there getting on his chair and turning it. Yeah. But uh, Tanaguchi able to straighten it out and catch that ball before he went over. Yeah, good play from. Both players and Orozco into space. You know, those are the kind of things that, you know, even if they don't go your way, eventually they're going to turn for you if you keep making that kind of play. Yeah. And again, it's planting a seed in the guy's guy's mind again, isn't right. it? I got got hit from behind. I, I nearly didn't get that last one. So, am I? Is it going to happen to me again? Damasino getting a lot of attention. Being pushed to that line. Did Roscoe. well to uh, avoid going into Neme to touch back. there. Mm. And now Goncalves can't get around. Tamaguchi. Twisting he, and turning. The, he's got help. The possession clock down to five seconds now. He's got you and your, oh, oh, there's the intercepting. interception. Again. Tried to force the pass there. Wow. And Roscoe comes away with it. So and it'll be a two-try difference. Colombia in the ascendancy in this early, early stages of this game. So Brazil getting ready to make some substitutions. I think they feel like they need to yep. make a change, make something happen here. So Rafael Govea burns a coach's timeout uh, in order to make that substitution. So we'll see Feitosa, number seven, coming out. A um, high point player. Right. Uh, Abreu, number nine. I'm guessing uh, Marcilio is coming out there, number eight, because he usually goes out with this line. And I don't remember who the low pointer is. It might be uh, Paolo Amarange. Oh, yeah. it could be Patrick. So, no, no Patrick's not. We've got out number there. eight. It's Nunes. Oh. Marcilio Nunes. Junquera. Yeah. And Junquera. <coughs> yep. Oh, table fell off the riser. <laughs> we'll call that technical difficulties. 
Uh, Breo with the ball, looking for the long pass to Feitoza. He turns, yep. He is fast. Is he is. It was close to an over and back there, but forward momentum was not halted. So no call from the referees, quite rightly. Good play, and it's a one-point game. Feitoza trying to get pressure, but he can't. He's caught in uh, in two in just no man's land there. Well, I like to say make a decision and do something because it's better than not making a decision and doing nothing. You don't get in the play. Yeah. Even if you make the wrong move, it's still better than not making any move. Yeah. And uh, Orozco putting pressure on. Real? Oh. Yeah. They really got him trapped. Neme then, tries Neme to back in. Oh, but then come, in comes Vargas with a big hit. They're running out of time. 12 oh, on the shot clock. Great pick from Neme. Oh, and Vargas oh, was super caught sleeping. Turn. Oh, wow. fantastic catch there. Was Such, that, uh, it was a great defensive stand by Colombia, but yeah. the persistence of Brazil got them across there. Yeah. Really, really like how that came together. Yeah, they didn't panic. They uh, kept their composure. Or if they did, it, it paid we off. couldn't see it. Timeout called by uh, Vargas there. First player timeout of the game used. Wasn't going to get the ball over the halfway in 12 seconds. So wisely used his first get out of jail free card. And so far, I would say the, the look of the change that Brazil has made has been in their favor. So that's the, the best defense. The intensities. Uh, yeah. Come well, up you know, when that. you bring new people out, they want, yep. they want to make their point and say, I deserve to be out here. You should have started me in the first place. Yep. And I'm going to make sure that you don't forget it. Roscoe drive. Oh, <laughs> that, <laughs> not that's quite. called passive aggression, I guess, <laughs> right there. Like, I'm coming, but I'm not coming. I'm, I'm not going to make a decision yet, but since you gave it to me, I'll just go across yes, the line. It was uh, <laughs> a lot easier than it should have been there than Feitosa. Wow. <laughs> we call that a snow cone. Yeah. He's got it right at the tip of his fingers. I I think there's a little bit of showboat in there going on. It, it wasn't well, that. I think it he wasn't, was I've also seen a lot worried tougher if, passes. if he didn't pull it in and possibly lose it, he yeah. just kind of stayed there, there, righted himself later. Because you want to get the try. You don't after, yeah. especially after a catch like that. You don't want to drop it. No, nope. very true. Yeah, and there's always a danger as you pull it back in, and your knees are moving forward. You just catch the ball and uh, lose possession. You also don't want the refs to, to think that there was some uh, lack of control as you're putting it back in your lap. Because you got to have and control. Abreu's going to use a timeout there very wisely after great pressure from Vargas. Vargas and, and shut down back further. No passing options mm -hmm. for him. No, that was good, good cover defense uh, from Colombia. Who... Uh, currently have a two-try lead with two minutes remaining of this first quarter. And uh, Brazil actually using this timeout. Not, and uh, Rafael Gouveia telling his players what he wants, not just using it as an opportunity to reset and go again. Not making any changes. No. Nope. I don't think this line has really had an opportunity to show what it can do. He did a pretty nice job against Australia. Neme doesn't see that he's got uh, Abreu coming up behind him, but he's, he finally does, stops him. Oh, and Orozco got loose. his hand he's in there. bouncing around like a pinball, but it's Orozco that comes up with it. Neme and Orozco both got a piece of that at one point. And it, they got a lucky bounce. Yeah. And but, you know, if you keep up that pressure, there, some of them are going to fall your way. Yep. And that uh, extends that lead to three tries with just over 90 seconds left. Oh. And Vargas in there with a hand there once again on Abreu. I'm really impressed with how Colombia has been taking Feitosa out of the play. He hasn't, he hasn't been the kind of threat that he was even in the Australia game. Right. Okay. 
Fertoza was desperately calling for a, uh, a timeout there. But then when he got it, he just hopped off the chair. So he wasn't really uh, in the position that... Was, it, was he saying know. that he was caught up on the, yeah, yeah. on the Neymar's chair? You know how you get that situation where the low pointer's got you locked up and you can't get off, so you think that you're, you're stuck, and then the referee comes over and the low pointer just backs away and he had you, he had you held, right? Technically, that's not, that's not an equipment. But sometimes you don't know that. Okay. Until okay. you see it, and then now you like you'll you'll trust yeah. that, that low pointer may have that pick. You might not make that call as a referee to, to give that equipment. But he was up on top of the picker of Neme that time. Yeah. He got off of it easily, but he didn't he didn't try until after the whistle blew. So Toza on the ball, trying to break down this Colombian key defense. Abreu's there in a good position to receive the ball, but uh, Orozco moves back to cover it. You do not want to pass over the arm of Orozco. No, you he's, don't. He's already it's learned a, that twice. It's a, a high-risk strategy. Ten seconds, no dribble, says oh. Liam Costello. And uh, another turnover, so Colombia will get the ball from the sideline. Jonathan Vargas, the coach, will be delighted with the start that they've made. They need we... to be careful, though, because when they, with the second game that they played in the, the last game they played in Colombia, Colombia got up and uh, it didn't go well for him at the end. No, we've seen games turn around. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, very large deficits uh, overturned. 22 on the game clock, 11 on the shot clock. Oh, nice, nice pass in and now... Uh, and he'll run down that shot clock as far as he can. Yeah. 12 and a half left on the game clock, no shot clock. So there's, there's time for uh, Brazil to score. Absolutely, with Feitosa out there. Yeah. Now that's the first time they've been able to get the Feitosa the ball in a long time. Between Orozco and Neme shutting him down. Five seconds under... Gets that to the low pointer. Oh, but he can't it. gather it in. Junquera tried to uh, scoop it onto his lap, but uh, it wasn't possible. And with 0.4 seconds remaining, it'll just be a simple inbound by yeah. Neme. And that's the end of the first quarter with Colombia up by four. Wow, that was a heck of a quarter for Colombia. That really was. Uh, you know, they, they were struggling at first, they were trading goals, and then all of a sudden the turnovers just started coming. Their, their defense was working well, and some of the opportunities that came their way fell their way. So, and they took advantage of them, they scored. Yeah, their key defense was, was pretty robust as well. Brazil struggled to, uh, to, to break that down and uh, find the space. Yeah, I, I think the difference there is the low point game. Right, I look at Orozco and Feitosa head to head. They're both fast, they're both aggressive players, they're both very good players. Um, but I think when you look at the, the picking of a guy like Neme, uh, he is really making a difference out there. Rodriguez too, although I think he's a two. Uh, 1.5. Is he a 1.5? Okay. Yeah. I think Neme's a one, right? Neme's a one, yeah. Yeah, one of their most experienced players. Yeah, he definitely has the most games under his belt, although Rodriguez is the, the guy who has the most time with the team. Right, yeah. Well, and Rodriguez and... Uh, and Va Vargas is uh, another Vargas, e yes. extremely uh, experienced player. Actually, I was thinking of Venegas. He's been with the team. Uh, he's one of the longest-term players for this team. Vargas has gotten a lot of a lot of time in the past couple of years, right? In really big games, right? The World Championship he played in uh, in Australia, those games down in uh, in Colombia just recently. It's it's great to watch the South American teams get better and better. Yeah, the, st the standard across the world in in this sport is just getting. Everyone's up, being elevated. Up, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you'd come to the world champs in the past and you'd think there's only three there's only three or four teams in with a chance of, of, of getting the podium. Now, this and year, in most cases, it's two that were going to compete and one that was going to end up playing for 
playing for silver, mm. right? Or I mean, the silver for bronze. Yeah. But uh, this this tournament's wide open, and with the um, yeah. with the banana skin that is the quarterfinals uh, in, being introduced, uh, we could see some real upsets uh, when we get those those crossover games. Right. These games, you want to win these, uh, give yourself an opportunity. But it's more about pride at this point. If they can win enough games, they can get into the into the playoff there at the end. And since the, both these teams are in the same pool, it's very likely that only one of them will get in. Be in the ninth yeah. and eleventh seeds. Yes. And uh, it's a it's a well it's a it's a tough tough pool. You've got Japan, Australia, Canada, Denmark, yep. and, th and then Brazil and Colombia. Yeah. If, if a team's going to make it, it's only going to be one. Yeah. Unless one of those other teams has a complete meltdown. Yeah. Um. Now, I'm excited to see uh, Denmark play either of these teams. Yes, they'll, 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 they'll both want to have a crack at, uh, at Denmark. Well, Bra Brazil tried last night, but uh, weren't able to... Uh, to get them too close. No. It was a 17-try differential as uh, num number 10 for Colombia, Uriel Rodriguez, has some running repairs. Is it his so footrest maybe they're down there uh, right around his feet? Difficult to see from here, but yes, certainly that, that area of the chair. We see that uh, Brazil, I think, have brought on number one, uh, Junior. Goncalves, number 10, back on the floor. Colombia, however, have made no chance. And Roscoe gets a hand in, and Rodriguez comes up with it. Mm, they don't want the ball in Neme's hands. Neme, yeah, so he swiftly offloads it to Orozco who turns and uh, just rolls in casual as you like Charlie Neme just uh, opened a restaurant two weeks ago yes Neme yeah pretty and, pretty uh and, pretty and, and getting engaged as well see yes he's having a busy time of it he's having a great life big hit and Gons Gonzalez gets rid of the ball but it only as far as Orozco and Brazil Giving turnover after turnover at this moment. 16-9. Yeah, that's a seven, seven try difference. That's that's huge at it's this stage of the game. It's unfortunate that they're not keeping statistics on this side like they are in the other side. Uh huh. Because I'd really like to see some of the uh, how some of these turnovers happen. I mean, I got to watch them happen, but I mean, as far as like, do they count as steals? Wilson on the end of that ball. Junior offloads it to Feitosa. And I, oh, Orozco and Gabriel punches him into the cone. Tries to squeeze in, but a great Whoa. hit there from uh, Orozco. Drives him into the cone. Just out of the corner of the screen. One of the uh, bench guys for Columbia was up and screaming and jumping around. He's very excited. They're, you know, this game, this game means a lot. It does. These two teams, they came here to do their best, but this is the game. This is the game that matters most to them. It, absolutely, it does to them. Yeah. Especially this, after this what happened their, in, This is in their South final. America. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is the one they will carry with them through the next two years. Yeah. Rafael Gouveia uses his second coach's timeout to uh, try and steady the ship. Both teams with three floor timeouts left. I've never heard them referred to as floor timeouts before. Why? <laughs> but I, I understand what the... Uh, what would you refer to them as? I'm just uh, curious. Player timeouts okay. or sometimes... Well, the ones I can call on the floor are the yeah. ones... On the that, floor. Right, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, those no, will save I, me from a turnover, or yes, absolutely, uh, yeah, help me complete a turnover because I don't go out of bounds as I yeah, grab the stolen ball. Shows the the different things that people on uh, in different Other continents sides of the will, pond, uh, yeah, 
We'll call call things. Oh, Still great, call it the pond. great pick there on Vargas by uh, number two, uh, Junquera. Faye Tosa did a really nice job of keeping Orozco from getting across the line. Orozco, number four for Colombia. He looks like he has a piece of tape on his mouth. Uh, yes, it's almost as if he got a piece of chewing gum. Well, at first stuck I thought his teeth. maybe he had something in his mouth, but I think he might have like gotten hit and they had to tape it up because he's got a cut. No, it's it, in it's the in game this morning. Yeah, it's in his mouth and he it, it moves it about and takes it out. And maybe he has uh, a. I'm uh, not sure what it is, but the referees seem piece. happy with it, and it's yeah. certainly not something that would cause anybody else an injury. He is chewing on it. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if that's yeah, a nervous that's, thing. Yeah. I bought my son a, a mouthpiece for flag football, and he uh -huh. chews one up every practice. Oh. <laughs> if you fit it by dentists, that could be a very expensive... They're uh, not cheap, for sure. But they have flavors in them, so they'll keep them in oh, their mouths. No. And he loves chewing it up <laughs> and squeezing the flavor out of it. <laughs> Feitosa good, breaking away. Good work by Feitosa there to uh, escape the clutches of Orozco. But it's still a uh, seven-try game. Looks like Goncalves has an axle problem. Popped right back in. <laughs> that was easily uh, sorted out of, out of shot for you guys. Those usually are. You know what I did see a lot of in Colombia was axles popping out. Seems like maybe some guys got some new axles because some of those springs must have been really poorly worn out, um, you know, over time. A lot of the, you know, I brought a lot of wheels and a couple of chairs. I was just about to say, they're, they're probably still using the chairs that you bought them well, years so, ago. <laughs> I didn't buy them <laughs> chairs, but I did certainly bring down some chairs, some of which were my own, some that weren't. And wheels and axles and tubes and tires and... Anything that, you know, could help them out, help them grow. And Brazil like, burn a second time out there. Looks like Neme's got a, a flat. Yep, he's asking for an equipment call. Brazil ringing the changes. Back come Tamaguchi and uh, Damasino. Yeah, Bruno Damasino. Number three. So this line worked at the beginning for Brazil. So they're going to try and uh, bring back some of that magic. Down by eight here in the second with 5.25 left. The pick of... Kira. Yep, nice ball over the top there to Damasino. And inbound to Vargas. And long pass there by Orozco to Rodriguez. Yeah, completely unmarked. Easy try. They're creating some good space. You know, yes. Uh, I spoke too soon. Vargas, I think, is one of the people who we saw a lot of axles being popped out. And I, I kept saying that I was going to call some buddies of mine, in, in, like at Vesco, and see if we couldn't get him some new axles. Right. Yeah. I, I didn't. I never made good on that promise. So uh, there's still time. Gonzalez over the top to Damasino. Orozco can't uh, do anything about it. And Brazil cut the deficit to seven. I don't think any of these guys is playing in a chair that I brought down there because I'm sure they got five eighths axles. <laughs> and they're made for them. Now, now you're going really technical on me. Well, the, <laughs> you know, the older chairs, I've seen them on the sidelines. Like when I was down in Colombia, there was one that had yellow wheels on it. Right. Uh, I know I brought that one down there. I recognize some of the tape jobs around the, the <laughs> aluminum, but, you know, I, at well, some point, Columbia bought a bunch of chairs um, so that they would fit the players because, let's face it, the equipment makes a huge difference. Oh. 
Having a good chair is a good thing. Having a chair that fits you is a great thing. Yeah. Make, and, makes a world of difference. Yeah, so, yeah. Playing in a chair that doesn't fit you yeah. uh, is, is, a, is more challenging. Yeah, I've seen new clubs that set up and uh, they're using you know, club chairs and just anything yeah. that anybody can climb into. And then when those players get enough fun, funds together to, uh, to purchase their own bespoke made-to-measure chair, the, oh, the, the difference it makes to them is phenomenal. Well, you, you first of all want to make sure you like the sport enough to invest in a chair. Yep. And then you need to sit in other people's chairs at tournaments to find out what chair is closest to what you need, and then you make adjustments from the measurements of that other chair. So you'll yep. call Melrose or Vesco or whoever and say, hey, I, I sat in this guy's chair. It's pretty much what I need, but I'd really like a little more dump and uh, maybe a, a ergo or something like that with it. And you know, they'll make you a chair based on that other chair with the, the specs, but you know it fits you pretty close. If you're gonna spend six, eight, ten, I've seen people spend $15,000 on a titanium low point chair. Um, you gotta know you're getting what you want because you can't just take it back. That's a phenomenal amount of money to be, to be spending yeah, on a crazy. chair. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, but, but at this level, you start to get to the point too where people are getting sponsorships. Mm -hmm. So the, the manufacturers will make a chair for you if you need a chair. If you're watching the live stream, listening to us uh, chew the fat, um, you'll wonder why the, the action's uh, not happening. There's a delay in the game due to, uh, I think, uh, a recurring problem that we've had uh, with the 40-second clocks. Uh, yeah, we had that earlier this morning. Yeah, I think we've had uh, change, been changing batteries on a regular basis. I think they've been turning all the clocks off and turning them back on again. It seems like there's a loose wire somewhere. It's not yeah. the batteries, I don't think. I mean, mm. they there's... do not need to change batteries every single game. No. <laughs> Mind you, there have been sense. a lot of turnovers. <laughs> that's yes, what, that's yes. 40 seconds. But, so they're, they're turning the clocks off. And they're... Well, turning some of them off. We've got three. Yeah. Is this one here because it doesn't work? There's another one on the floor behind it. They, I don't have, know if they brought that in before the start of the game, so whether that's... Uh, this clock yeah. is resetting. Is yeah. it? Are they having that overheating problem? Because remember they had that overheating problem uh, a few years ago when they had uh, European championships here. They had here. it in the Europeans. They had it in the um, 2014 they said they uh, World Championships. The, in the software and that they hadn't seen that problem. But mm. this one clock has been a problem. Yes, yeah, it's, it's generally been the one... Uh, where Karina Jorensen is uh, is standing. She's the wife of uh, the Danish captain. Leon, that's Leon. right. Yeah. They have two children, one sitting in the stroller right behind her in a, in a tiger outfit. <laughs> and doesn't he look Very smart? Very cute. He ran right up to me and asked me what my name was. And, oh, did he? And, but, Lovely. of course, it was in Danish, so I didn't know what he said. So <laughs> she, said, what's, she said, what's your name? And I said, oh, Dave, what's your name? And then he is looked at her and said something that, and it's not ran Tor? away. No, um, I know the, the six-year-old is called Tor, but I think this is the, the three-year-old, and I can't remember his name. I don't know. He's the younger one, huh? Yeah. He's a big three-year-old. He's a big three-year-old, and uh, Tor is a big six-year-old as is well. He? Yeah. I'm not sure I've seen him then. I... <laughs> Clocks are moving uh, together. I think we might be okay. We've got something happening. That's good. <laughs> I was telling... Oh, but uh, now this one says 71, so... Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, we're back all on 34s. That's good. Uh, in my mind, maybe you take out the two bad clocks and have one in each opposite corner, like... We always yep. used to. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. It's only at major championships that you tend to see four clocks in operation. Most most uh, league league weekends and club matches, you just have the two clocks. Sometimes you're lucky if you got one. <laughs> that call is stuck. Yeah, great defense by Colombia. Damasino desperately trying to get them. Oh, Nemi, and, uh, out of bounds. Yeah, good work by Taniguchi there. Seeing that they were struggling... Took advantage saw, of the... Saw another way to solve the problem. He has his hands off his wheel to try and knock the ball down, but he's not protecting his chair. Yeah. And if you could see me, I have my arm up in the air <laughs> demonstrating, but only the people in the stands over there really could see it. Yes. 
and they don't know why. But as players, you're looking for that, aren't you? You're looking for those that, yes. that change of hand position. And, uh, and you catch a guy doing something that gives you an advantage. It's like years ago, I went and played wheelchair basketball with a bunch of guys mm -hmm. when they still used to play in day chairs. Sure. And these guys, I'd be trying to make my way down court, and these guys would come past me and flip, flip on the brakes. Mm. <laughs> That's a long time ago if that you was were a playing very in everyday chairs, because I played my first tournament in an everyday chair in 1992 or 93. Yeah, that, that would have been around about that time, actually. Or maybe even a bit earlier than that. And then it, I... I took seven or eight years off because I didn't think I could play. And then, uh, lo and behold, I found somebody who wanted me to come to practice. And I fell in love with the game again and uh -huh. never looked back. 22 seasons I played. Well, this is my 22nd season. Big long ball Rodriguez. there from Orozco and oh. Rodriguez. Okay. Hitting him at the line is one thing. He hit him behind the line there. I think that should be a penalty. But that was great refereeing by Liam Costello there. He, he was right there in position, saw what happened, and, and just had a quiet word with, uh, yeah. with Tanaguchi. Yeah, didn't need anything more. He didn't won't need let a that heavy go hand. again. Yeah. Because you can't hit him after the line and get away with it. No. I can see hitting him at the line if you have a chance to make a difference. But once he's across, you got to let him go. And there he is at the other end, scoring. Another equipment call. There was a time where that would just automatically be called a flagrant. Yes. In fact, uh, you know, it happened to us one time in a string in which we were up by seven in the, in the third and ended up losing the game in the playoffs. Oh, he, oh, he almost took out that, <laughs> that panel of uh, LEDs. <laughs> I don't know how he got a hold of his wheel enough to turn, but that picker could have gone right so through So I think the referees thing. are discussing whether he got a timeout call in, in t before he hit the line. And the answer and is no. They, they decided no, he didn't. Uh, or he wasn't actually in possession in order, to call, or in order to call the timeout. So he might have called the timeout, but if he didn't have full possession, right. it's not going to be granted. And regardless of why, it yep. means Brazil gets the ball. Yep. And they've had precious oh. few turnovers, so they'll be delighted with that one. And they yeah. also get Orozco going to the bit penalty box for illegal use of hands. He got his hand in there. Yep. Must have made some contact, but he certainly yep. affected the ball's ability to go where he wanted it, the player wanted to go. Yep. Always makes me smile um, when I'm refereeing. Oh. They call the push. Okay, you very seldom see a pushing foul uh, being called. He also said 21, but it's 25. But so and now it's four on two. It's yeah, not to Colombia's Vegas. advantage, but uh, yeah. As I was saying earlier, the players you call them for. Um, Illegal use of hands, and they apologise as if they, you know it's something that they're not meant to do. Everybody's allowed to reach for that ball. Sure, <laughs> it's, it's whether I decide to call it as a referee, or you know, or, and whether we penalise it or not. But uh, oh, I think Roscoe could have gotten out of that pick. Now he's running out of time. Oh, look at that! What an arm! Oh, it's hit Tanaguchi, and it'll still be Colombian ball. That advances the ball basically all the way down the court. Yeah, not a bad play. Venegas is sat in the penalty box. He's just been told to move in to slot number one as opposed to slot number two, yeah, which he's is out of shot at the moment. And uh, he's Colombia will also minutes. look to run the clock a little bit. I thought he would have run the clock there, Orozco. Short-handed uh, try. In order to get his player out of the bin quicker. Well, I think short-handed, he was more concerned with just making sure he got the try to even things out. Because if they didn't score that and you wasted all that time, they still end up uh, with a two-try difference based on those penalties. Yeah. This way, it's only one. Good thinking. And he's out of the bin now, so uh, still up Columbia back to full strength. And uh, 
Yeah, six try game. So Brazil starting to eat into that lead, but uh, these long balls from Orozco are killing them as Rodriguez gets on the end of that one. He's got that sky hook working for him, throwing that ball up and over his body. Yeah. Oh, oh Venegas that, almost that got a piece of that. only just got to Gonzalez. A good pick from Neymar there. Really forcing the Brazilian to work hard. Tanaguchi pulls it in. Getting a lot of pressure. Yeah. There's a song I didn't expect to hear in here. <laughs> Damasino being and now pushed back. Colombia a little afraid of, of a pushing call there. They could have punched him across that line. So you can push somebody. Not to gain an advantage. Right. Well, you, can, you can push somebody half the length of the court. As long as you don't push them into a position that is illegal, right. it's not a pushing foul. It's only when you push them into an illegal position that the referee requires. So you see players screaming, referee, referee, he's pushing me, he's pushing me. Yeah, so what? Right. <laughs> he's allowed to, or she's allowed to, until it becomes an illegal position. And then it will get penalised. Well, I think the Colombians are a little gun shy because of the one that got called earlier. I saw some hands up in the air, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Zach Medell over in the corner there. Yep. He had a, a great game against Australia, but they were unable to come out on top. It was two points. Two try different. Two yep. tries, thank you. Wow. That's, uh, I think that, both of those teams gonna are going to have game, some well. fun matchups this week. Yes. Yeah. Seeing who everybody gets in the quarterfinals is going to be uh, really interesting. As Gonzalez uh, drives into the key, is initially repelled, He's gets it to Taniguchi, on. and Out the clock time. just wow. beats them on the 40 seconds. So Brazil unable to convert that ball. That Both. Trot, that Both officials position. waving that off. Yeah, and he did cross that line. Less than a second after that buzzer went off, but oh, it yeah, went off. Literally, it, it, tenths or hundredths of a, of a, he was a second. in motion yep. in that direction. Lovely pass from Vanegas. And Orozco playing the clock now, 25 seconds remaining. No shot clock. Nope. So if you're wondering why it st still says 40, they can't be turned off. But So they just leave it at 40 and don't have it running. Now he's got the picks he was looking for. Yeah. Got a free shot. Nicely worked. And he can go to the line and time it to his, to the, his own content. Uh, the low point play for Colombia in this game has been really good. And that's the end of the first half. And Colombia lead it by 26 to 18, an eight try differential. So different from the end of the first, right? I, I, you feel like Colombia's in, in a strong position at this point, but again, we're, we're not that far apart. There's still plenty of opportunity for Brazil to chip away at this and get this back, but yep. it's half the game instead of three quarters, so. But it's, that, that second quarter was a replica. 9-13, both for yeah. first quarter and second quarter. So uh, that four, four tries is a... You know, when you do four tries each quarter, that, that soon mounts up and you've got a, you've got a big difference yes, by the does. end of the game. And uh, True that. Colombia will be, obviously be uh, very, very happy with that, uh, that first half performance. And as you say, down to the, uh, the expertise of their low point players as, as much as the... Uh, the work of, uh, of Orozco as the high pointer. Yeah, if I, I think if you'd have gone to Coach Vargas and said, let's play half a game and you get eight points to start, I think he'd have said, okay. <laughs> I think he'd have bitten your arm off, yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. So, any way back for Brazil, you reckon? You're Absolutely. saying about yeah, if they can cheap, keep chipping yeah. away? Well, the, the key here is to, to not feel like you're in a position where you have to get that all at once. You just have to have small victories as you go. The turnovers will come. 
but you got to keep working it. You, not only do you get the turnover, but you got to make it count. Yeah. And you, it, you've, and you've got to protect your own possession first as well, absolutely. haven't you? You've got to, you've got to convert absolutely. all of your possessions, the, the, not give any more turnovers the, away. It, the, the turnover ratio has to be positive. Yeah. The, the tries have to come, you know, because if you, if you get turnovers but you're not converting them, or if you're giving the ball up on your own, that's not positive. It doesn't work in your favor. Okay, so there's eight minutes remaining of the interval. Um, time for you to go and put the kettle on, make yourself a cup of tea or uh, uh, something stronger, if, if that's uh, what's needed at this time of the day. Is there is that available to us too? <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully not, you know, something uh, that I think I, the commentary might deteriorate. I noticed at the, at the football game I went to up in Randers. Uh -huh. um, that's pro I'm probably saying that wrong. But they also have them here. It is a, so they sell beer in a plastic cup like we would at home, like a, a solo cup kind of cup. Yep. But there is a piece of cardboard with five holes in it that folds up to a handle so you can carry five beers in one hand. Yeah, that's because you're meant to be buying beers for other people, not, How not is it all that we for don't yourself, have that Dave. in the United States? Do you not have that? No. Oh, what? I've never seen it in the United well, States, you, and I have, go to football games, You have cardboard coffee games. cup holders, things like that. Sure, like you go to McDonald's and they give you this yeah, thing that precisely. you put four cups in, but no, this yeah. this is open top yeah. beer, carry five of them, and balanced, really easy to carry. Like when you carry that thing that they give you from McDonald's, right, or you get from any place that has mm -hmm. four cups up there, you're holding it from the bottom, and it's kind of precarious. You're going to spill some. It is. Yeah, well, all, when you all hold the white, this thing from the, the top, yeah. right, the, the cardboard folds up over the top of the cups, and fold into a handle in the center <laughs> so it's perfectly balanced well how we don't I, i'm gonna have to start a company i was gonna that does say, I was just gonna say you, your next business uh, plan I, i'm <laughs> gonna go straight to the, the detroit lions and say i have an idea i need you to buy these from me and then i have to figure out how i'm gonna make them <laughs> that's a minor technicality yeah anyway uh, we're gonna have a little bit of a break for home. for the last five minutes or so of the interval we'll uh, we'll get back to you at the start of the uh, Second half. Maybe we'll actually talk about rugby. <laughs> that would make a change. Thanks for listening. See you later.
And then, and then I got a, I got a ship it to it. Chelsea. Okay, there we go. Yep, that's better. Welcome, Welcome back to Vila here in Denmark. World Championships 2022. And Abreu scores the first try of the second half for Brazil. To reduce the deficit. We see a lineup change here for Colombia. Yep, Martinez comes on. Paula she, Martinez. She played really well uh, against Japan this morning. And looks like she's already got a wheel problem. I don't even think she got hit. Some of those tubes have so many patches on them that they'll just pop themselves. <laughs> well, you don't want to throw them away too early. I, I actually begged someone on the Colombian bench who was patching a tube for the 25th time if he would <laughs> trade me a new tube for that tube so I could throw it away. But, uh, 
actually gave him Nunes eight of them. managing to free himself there, finds Abreu. Oh, nice. Nicely nice worked. Work. Yeah. The ball handler is separate enough. But not transition to defense not working for him there. So, so far just trading him. Going try for try. Roscoe taking a swipe at that one. <laughs> so there's six teams in Colombia. Uh, most of these players uh, play for the Archangels team out of Bogota. But uh, Brazil have a lot more teams uh, than that. Probably at least probably around double that number. Wow. Well, Brazil's been playing longer than Colombia, but they also have. Yeah. Uh, a lot more cities with people in them. Yeah. And population-wise as well, I, I think it's... Uh, well, isn't it's Sao quite, Paulo quite, the largest, uh, most populated city in South America? I would think it probably is, yes. I mean, I know that uh, Bogota is 9 million people in that... Is it? Wow. ...plateau, yeah. I didn't realize it was, it was that big, but... Uh, well, there was a time where the... the Oh, great pick there by Neymar to uh, on free up Vargas, but he's cut off by Feitosa oh. and uh, also uh, Junior. Orozco takes it away, and what do we got? Uh, Equipment. Equipment by Brazil, which gives Colombia a new shot clock. A new 40 seconds, of which we only have two at the moment <laughs> operating. So the one in, in the corner of your screen you, is showing nothing at the moment and as we have two others just diagonally on the court to help the players problem solving yep but, uh, yeah it's, that's always a a tough one when you think you've got a team pen, penned in and you've got a chance of turning the ball over and the clock's running down on them and then one of your teammates calls a, an equipment timeout yeah, and gives right. them a full 40 back. And Neme takes it to the line. He's having a great game. He is. And the Breo being kept very, very low. He just keeps turning him back. Yeah. But perseverance. Oh, and... Uh, well done. Yep. Great play by Nunes. I didn't think he was going to get that for a second. But, uh, he just stretched out his arms and pulled it back in. As Ryan Gaudet almost gets his toes uh, crunched. Columbia answers back. And we have a nine try game. 30 plays 21. Quite a low scoring game uh, so far, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Does that work to one team's advantage more than another's is the question. And at this point, it works to Columbia's oh, advantage. Fetosa, over and back. Liam Costello right on point to uh, spot that, taking the ball into the front court and then being bashed back into his own back court. Uh, in this situation, this works to Colombia's advantage to be a low scorer because the deficit is a third of their total score. Yes. Yeah. Very true. So, it, you know, if they can keep things slowed down use a lot of that shot clock. It's not a bad thing, but no. again, got to score the tries. And Martinez, is he saying that she got pushed? Yeah, offensive foul signaled there by... Uh, well, I think she might have crossed the line. Okay. She should know not to go Probably to the box. The, 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 punch, the, the fist punched out by what the referee it is an offensive foul call. Oh, is that what it means? Yeah. So... Uh, and you don't, you don't see it called that often. You see a lot of defensive fouls, but you don't see a huge number of offensive fouls. What is it that you do to... to, to so to so if, I, if I'm in possession mm -hmm. and you reach in and I push out with my elbow... Oh, so like or something a clear like out? That, yeah, okay. clear out. Okay. Uh, gotcha. Uh, ...would be an offensive foul. 
You're right. I don't know that I've ever seen that sign before. I saw <laughs> him do it. Yeah. And I thought, what? What is that? That's not. Cool. Yeah, because. It would have been, leaving the court would have been a completely different uh, I'm glad signal. to be sitting next to a referee. <laughs> Get the official skinny. <laughs> then they turned him around again. Good work there from uh, Nunes. And, but Martinez uh, picks him well and, and gives Martinez, time. Thank you for Orozco and uh, Neymar to get back. No, no urgency from Fertoz at the moment. He's only got a few seconds left. He stops. Oh, good Ooh. play. That was nicely worked. That's a tough pass to make because you're rolling backwards, so you lose momentum on the ball forward. Yeah. But he was able to pull it off. But, he also, but that rolling back motion also drew the defenders out. Yes. And uh, it, it did... When you're trying to get the ball over a Roscoe, you want him coming toward. <laughs> you, want, you want to get enough separation space. Yeah, the closer you are to him, the easier it's going to be for him to knock it down. Yeah. But Columbia makes it nine once more. Yeah. It's, uh... Looks like we got some Colombians in the audience. <laughs> we have, yeah, they, they're just about uh, twice. Two or three times the size of the uh, the Brazilian contingent, but, uh, and uh, Junior, the uh, team captain for Brazil, calls an equipment timeout, interrupts his uh, team's possession, and Martinez also uh, asks for attention. So there's, there's actually three players on court, all. Uh, with wheels. New, all having new wheels. I don't, <laughs> don't think I've ever seen that happen. <laughs> I've seen two, but three is, yeah. especially this one, way down at the other end of the court. That's right. That, is, that you, is Sometimes unusual. you get a double connection, yeah. both people will pop, or uh, one will pop, and then another one will pop while you're waiting for the equipment, but three is... Uh, <laughs> a hat trick. <laughs> I'm not throwing my hat down. <laughs> Although I guess I could get another one. I did get it at CPH, so. Oh, oh he drops it. Knew back. he was going to be over and back, let it go, and it yeah. uh, didn't matter. Yeah. So uh, there's the turnover that Brazil was looking for, but in uh, the wrong direction. Yeah. And Colombia used the opportunity to give uh, Vargas a well-earned rest. On comes uh, Giovanni Vanegas. Yeah. Vargas has had some nice minutes. He has, yeah, in, in both games uh, that he's played today. And Vanegas is straight into the action. <laughs> Nicely worked by Orozco. Wow. And back to a 10-try lead. Somebody spent a lot of money on air horns. <laughs> oh, great pass. Eugenio got that one over the top. Yep, and uh, first time we've seen uh, Jose uh, Eugenio today. Been on the national team since 2011. Also the president and team manager for Brazil. I played, some, I played some pretty epic matches against him when he played in uh, in Indianapolis. They were a tough right. team. Okay. Was he there for long? Just one season. Okay. I think it was one. One or two. Mm -hmm. Probably one. Yeah. You've seen a lot of players develop in the United States from yes. you know all the way back to Dan Buckingham. Uh -huh. Well, Jim, Jim Roberts uh, from GB uh, had a fantastic time. Uh, Stuart Robertson right now is under the tutelage of uh, our own Adam Scaturro right. in uh, Tampa. Uh -huh. Stuart, a heck of a player. He is. And uh, I, think, I think with uh, you know, a, a little bit of 
filing off some rough edges. He's <laughs> he's already a great player, but he could be just unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, he was a product of uh, the Invictus Games. Um, played for the GB team, I think, in the uh, the, the first one back in 2014. Um, and uh, that was held in the Copper Box in London, the final. Right. Final was USA GB. And uh, we were graced with royalty. And uh, in oh. the exhibition match, oh, yeah? uh, my my f my fellow referees put uh, Prince Harry in the in the penalty box. So nice. that, that's their knighthoods and MBEs gone. <laughs> They're not going to feature in any New Year's honor list. Yeah, Bat and Bond both played in the United States for a little while. Uh, Lots of people have. Yeah. Ross Morrison. Yes. I'm sure you're familiar with him. Yeah. And Eugenio takes it over, his first try of the game. Actually, Orozco has played in the United States. Well, you, you've got so many clubs over there. There's so many opportunities. There's 40 to 45 clubs every year, 500 players. We play wow. pretty much every weekend, except over the holidays. Yeah. Right? There's a three-week break there. The weekend before Christmas, you don't usually see something. Christmas, mm. New Year's, no. But the weekend after New Year's, right back to it. Uh, and once in a while, you'll see one Thanksgiving weekend. I, I know most of you don't know what Thanksgiving is, but <laughs> it's in uh, it's in November one time. But yeah, we just we just run from September to the, when the playoffs start in the middle of February, end of February, depending on what's going on. Well, I've just put the dates for all the GB league weekends in my calendar for 2023, and there's there's 12 there's 12 weekends already in the calendar bef before we even add in regional development leagues right. and so forth. So that's great. GB's probably getting it's not still not as big as uh, the US program, but uh, we, with the introduction of uh, f fives rugby then we've seen a, a real growth in, in, in teams and the, and the number of players playing the I noticed that. I went to the, the GB website where they show where all the teams are, yeah. looking for teams to play in case we were able to come next year. Yeah. And I, when I saw the number, I was floored, and then I realized a lot of them are fives. Yes. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of the like new clubs. basketball players, yeah. right? Yeah, well, any, well the, the beauty is anybody, anybody with a physical can, yeah. disability can play fives. Sure. And, uh, you know, it's just opened the sport up to uh, to so many new people. It's been brilliant. We've now got uh, an international club tournament happening um, in Poland next, wow. month, next month. That's great. With Leicester Tigers and Northampton Saints representing GB. Martinez able to oh. intercept that pass. She, did very well to get out of that traffic as well because there, the there was a lot of heat around her there. And Venegas gets it all, wow. arms in from Fetosa. And Liam Costello in the perfect position to spot that. And uh, the Brazilian high pointer from Sao Paulo plays for Santa Vikings, will find himself uh, in the penalty box, taking no further part until Colombia score. So that turnover by Paula Martinez gives Colombia the opportunity to make this an 11 try deficit. Yep. And Faye Tosa being in the box does not make that any easier for Brazil to stop them. 16 seconds left on the game clock. Yep. No shot clock, obviously. Uh, Martinez going to put a trap on the. Uh, Betosa, you can't see that. That's out of shot as Orozco takes it to the line. We'll yeah. try and use up as much time. And I'm going to say something controversial here, but rather than score that try, I almost rather leave, leave Faitosa in, the, in box. the box. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I could, I I could burn another 25 seconds in the third quarter or the fourth quarter. Yeah. Uh, Columbia, the clock is their best friend right now. It is. So the ball from the inbound there. Didn't get touched by anybody, so it's a, a sideline ball. And they're having to reset the clock. See, that's a mistake. That you don't you don't make that pass and yeah. give and give the other team an opportunity now to score another one. Yes. Right? And we saw that in the Canada game. Um, I think there's about, about 1.7 left Australia on the clock. Australia managing clock, working the clock. Uh, 
Every time I see you come, I'm worried about it because I know you're going to start asking us a question that we're not prepared to answer yet. You want to remind us about player of the match? Yeah, How much time do we have? What are our thoughts? We've got about four or five. Okay. We'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We seem to have flipped the clock over onto the, uh, the fourth quarter. So uh, they're going to try and uh, reset it. They might work it off the stopwatch. That's uh, also that, a possibility. That's a good, a good way of doing it's, it. Or they it's could put, not a lot of time. It was what three seconds, two I, seconds. I, I thought it was 1.7, something like that. They've put, they've got two seconds on there. But, uh, and here we go. Neme is trying to catch this pass across the line. Yes. Gets the try. That was amazing. Yeah, that was fantastic by Colombia. Great play. Uh, again, Neme to me has uh, is an excellent candidate for for a man of the match. Orozco also man of the match possibilities. Vargas has so, had a great game. They have, yeah. There, there are a lot of contenders. And we, we've got <laughs> teams of regular habits. It's 9-13, 9-13, 9-13, all three quarters. That shows you the difference between these teams, yeah. right? Absolutely. It's four it, tries it does a quarter. Today. Yep. If they played tomorrow, it could be it, a different it could be a different story. Yeah. They it's, will play another time this yeah, week, yeah. probably. Yeah, there's a good chance these two could meet yeah. for uh, 11th and 12th playoff or 9th and 10th playoff, yep. depending on how uh, things go in the rest of the tournament. Unless, you know, Colombia matches up really well against one of the other teams in that pool, but it is a tough pool. That is, it is a you tough know, pool. Denmark had a choice uh, Denmark of the sides, hosts. and they so they got to choose which pool to go into. Yeah. Both pools are difficult, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I think you know these these teams are in a, in the tougher pool. I th I think Denmark in in choosing choosing the pool would have had their eye on the quarterfinal. They'd have been thinking, well, who do we want to who do we not want to meet in the quarterfinals? Sure. So they be so they say, would we rather meet the likes of uh, USA, GB, France? Well, uh, and they made Jason Regeer choose it there live on camera, and he's like, oh, gosh. Well, that, that should have been worked <laughs> hard, out. That should hard. have been worked out long Well, I'm sure before. he had thoughts about it, but, <laughs> but you know, you're drawing that, right? You're drawing yeah. it live, and then now you're presented with, all right, mm. guess what? This is this is pretty pretty balanced. I'd, I'd have had a crib sheet that was said, <laughs> if, if this comes. <laughs> you know, I think when it comes down to it, either side, because of the new format, doesn't really matter what side you end up on. What matters is that you end up in the top four. Yeah, you can fight your way up. Yeah, you, yeah, you've got to make that top four, and then you've you've got to win that uh, that crossover game. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Of course, it's going to be the one against the four, so it's the twos, threes that are the ones at the most risk, right? You'd think so, but yeah. any not necessarily. No. Not necessarily. Fourth can beat right. first. We are in on, on at any world given championships. Day. Yep. There is a lot of talent in this building. And we've because they'd flipped the scoreboard over um, into the fourth quarter when they were trying to sort out that problem with the clock at the end of the last quarter. Oh, we've now flipped into overtime. So. Uh, Getting back oh, out. Is getting it back out for rugby yeah. overtime? Is that why it's? Yes, but I why it was three it should, minutes, it not five. It shouldn't come up with five minutes, and it should be a three-minute. You can't see this on uh, on the shots, but you you can see that the uh, the play is delayed. Liam Costello with his hand on his hip there. Wait, we are waiting for see things the to get sorted. They're gonna, players are going to end up going back to the bench here pretty quick if yeah. they can't fix this. Because yeah, they yeah, got a lot of experience. And you see the official here. waving them back. Go on. And the boy in the uh, the tiger suit is chasing after his mum now, who's come over to the officials' table to help try and sort it. <laughs> and he's running round the side of the court. He's <laughs> out, out of shot. Enforcement boy. tiger. Yeah. Protection. He's up. He's up down. He's in front of us on the uh, the terracing, and uh, he wants wants to know where his mum's gone. They've got it back to the fourth quarter, but they haven't yet got it to eight minutes for the moment. We're stuck on five, just to, just to keep you uh, 
appraised of the uh, technical shenanigans. But, uh, the players just uh, trying to get sorted. Orozco's got one wheel off at the moment, so he's uh, enjoying the fact that uh, they haven't started. I and, really uh, expected this to be a lot closer. I was hoping for a really close game. Well, yeah. always, uh, you know, for me, I, I would much rather watch a close game, right? I, I'm not super invested in who wins. Of course, I, I care in several matches. I'm a big fan of the underdog. Um, but at the end of the day, I just want to see a great game. Yep. That's what everybody who's uh, tuned in to the live stream is has been hoping well, for. But more uh, often than not, those people want to see their team win first and the great game second. <laughs> but if you can have both, of course yep. you want both, right? I think, I think we're getting a lot of neutrals. Uh, yeah. in for these, these live streams as well. There's, I've you know, definitely a... gotten a lot of comments from people in the United States. And, mm. you know, they while they have a horse in the race, uh, yeah. I think they're watching some other games because it's based I, on I think there are. There's a, the GB games aren't until uh, last last game of the day um, on, on all, all first of the, the, the first four days. But wow. I know there's people in GB who are tuning in to, to games during the course of the day, which is, is, is great to know. I think uh, the majority of the ticket sales uh, here in the, uh, the venues have gone to uh, people, from, well, people from Denmark first and then uh, people from GB as well. We didn't decide. Still waiting on our uh, clock problem. They're now correcting the score because they started over at quarter one. Uh, putting the score back up, 39-27, winding down the, the timeouts. Um, I don't know if they'll be able to get it to show fourth quarter, but I think we could live without it. Uh, I, th I think we can, yeah. I mean, uh, there's always a chance we could end up in overtime, but I'm not really counting on it. There's always a chance, as you say. And, uh, Looks like Orozco has something in his eye. He, uh, he's he got some drops in it earlier, and then somebody just came off the off the stands and took a look in his eye. All oh, right. Well I, spotted. I hadn't sure picked that up. On. And we see the return of uh, Vargas, Julian Vargas, for uh, Colombia. I know that my gloves generate tiny little, little tiny pieces of glue that come from other people's chairs under my chair, and then when I stop with my gloves, it rips that stuff up, and it be, it's tiny little black things, and sometimes when I catch a ball up high, it'll go right in my eyes. All right. So I can see that being a potential problem. Yep. As Go Gonzalez it's pretty annoying. heads towards the Colombian line, turns away now. Small price to play to be able to play. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, you, I know. Can, you can live with that. I, I want to be able to see at the end of the day, but um, a little dirt in my eye <laughs> shouldn't cause a problem. No try. No. Good defense there. Yep. Again, Vargas in that conversation, right? He's, he's yes. had a phenomenal game. He's been out for a while. He has, he has played a, a phenomenal game. Ball's rolled loose there from the inbound. He's now he's put it into the field of play. So it's a turnover, turnover. says Leon Costello. He dropped it he and then tried to pick it up. And, and it, I think he crossed it found, the line. Yeah, it did. It found its way onto the court. So yeah. that's an invalid inbound. Well, when he tried to pick it up, his front caster went onto the court. They could have stopped it right there, too. Yeah. Yes, you can't enter the field of play before the ball has been, been inbounded. I've done it. <laughs> you're, you're How many other offences do you wish in to have taken into It was a very intense game. Right. I ran, picked up the ball, 
on the sideline, looked up at the ref, and he nods his head, okay, like I don't have to give it to you. So I pushed onto the court, and I ran in, in right into the key, and somebody blew a whistle, and I looked back, and I'm like, what did I do? He's like, you forgot to inbound, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Another one of those plays that the guys who were there will never let me lift down. <laughs> I love that. Meanwhile, back on court, Columbia have come up with yet another uh, turnover. And uh, they almost, Orozco almost got another one there, but Fetosa. Oh, he went the, over hard. He did, didn't he? He, he almost span himself there. He uh, flipped he, himself he back gets onto up his back. Trying to make a reach and or turn around and yeah. get out of a pick, and he looks like he's okay. He, he does, yeah. There's, there's, bump, there's a wry, wry smile on his face there, and uh, I heard a thump, like he hit his shoulder or his head. Yeah, but I, th I, I think that could have been the chair as he as he used his trunk to flip himself round onto his back rather than land on also uh, possible on his side. And a volunteer out there to clean up his sweat. <laughs> There are some lovely volunteer roles. Some of us who sweat. There aren't that many yeah. of us, you nope. know, as a percentage. We're at least, you know, most of the spinal cord injuries can't sweat. Nope. A lot of the other ones can. Amputees and... And Vargas CP takes it away. Fetosa cuts him off. No. But uh, Orozco's on hand. And I believe that's this lady Gonzalez, number eight who's uh, had the problem on that inbound and just inbounded from the baseline. Uh, I heard he and Charlie and Paula are pretty tight friends. Right. I know I see videos of, of Charlie and Paula all the time. Uh-huh. Uh, when they're traveling and training and... Well, Roscoe with yet another Colombian turnover. So this, uh, when these two normally play, it, it tends to be quite a close affair, doesn't it? Uh, it can be. Sometimes it'll get out of hand, but this is this has been one of those occasions. Brazil well, will be again. Uh, Brazil is smarting. missing two players. Yeah, and they had one that got classed up. So yeah, uh, that could be the difference here. Yeah. Rafael Govea was chatting to me earlier in the day and saying, uh, right. what, no. a what a tough year this has been. Uh, the president died earlier in the year as well. And uh, yeah. yeah, Brazilian rug rugby has, uh, has, will be pleased to see the back of uh, 2022, I think. You know, and I, I don't want to take anything away from Colombia. They've played a great game. Mm. But those are certainly factors, right? Yeah. I mean, when they, they and, and you know, their their president died on the way to that tournament or the first day of the tournament in Colombia. Was it? Um, oh, I hadn't appreciated he, yeah, that. Yeah, so, you know, I, I think during that first game, there was a lot of sadness. Yeah. And in the imagine. second game, it was inspiration. We're going to win this game for them. So, yeah. You know, we're going to come back and we're going to beat these guys after they just beat us. Yes. And uh, it was... It was, they were both very fun games to watch, uh, despite the the weight uh, and of the sadness uh, mm. of the loss of such a great man. I mean, he he is a, a big part of why Brazil has you know such strong para sports. You know, heavy in their Paralympic committee. He was a Paralympian himself. Uh, been very involved with rugby. Yeah, very sad. Yes, I, I met him back in 2016, and he was a, yeah, a larger-than-life character, yeah. and uh, yeah, great guy. Very sad. <laughs> On the other hand, Brazil have made their first World Championship. Yes, so, yeah, and they should be super proud. They he should would be, be proud for sure. Yeah. Vargas is going to take it up. And, yeah, the sport's only been going since 2008 in Brazil. That's that. You know, they're, they're one of the newer nations. Yeah. Yeah, Brazil and Argentina got started, and then Colombia was shortly after. We went down there and mm -hmm. did that. Uh, we did four demos, which were super fun, because, you know, it's four guys on each team. Uh, there was one female player, and everybody right. loved watching her play. They all <laughs> cheered for her. Um, but, you know, they're demos, so... We're playing hard, but we're also looking to make big hits and 
and create drama. So like we picked one person to be the bad guy in every game, and and they would come <laughs> over and, and like you know yell at somebody and get thrown in the penalty box with a technical. And my brother was the referee, and you know we so <laughs> we we orchestrated a little bit of drama to make it exciting. Yeah, that's great. But it was super fun, and clearly the sport stuck for them. Yeah. So fun. So we're seeing, we've seen a coach's timeout called by Jonathan Vargas of Colombia and uh, some changes made to the Brazilian lineup. Uh, on comes uh, number 12, Paulo Amaranch, and also uh, number six, Patrick. Patrick got a lot of minutes against Australia. Did he? Okay. Because he he didn't feature uh, at all or very very little uh, against uh, Denmark in their first game. I wonder if that really comes down to matchups. Could be. Could now be. Australia d did not play bat and bond together very often. Okay. In that game, they started off with one high. Yeah. Um, I'm and sure they, they played them a lot against Canada. Oh, yeah. Not not the entire time. There was some time that Bond sat on the bench, but right. not much. And that is the 48-33. Yeah. A 15 try difference now. Just three and a half minutes left. If Your clock is two seconds behind our clock. If it goes 9-13 again, then... It, It'll be a 16 try differential and uh, Colombian turnover due to a line uh, violation there by uh, Amaranch. Vargas and Venegas both involved in that one, creating yep. that turnover. Putting pressure on. So many guys in the conversation for man of the match again here, right? Yes. I mean, everybody for Colombia has played well. They have, yes. I would love to see the turnover numbers because it can't be very significant. So Brazil come out of their key defense and then yeah, head straight back into it. They can't just sit there with three minutes left down no. by 15. By 15 no. Down by 16 now. But yeah, when you go plus four in turnovers every quarter, you can't Patrick lose. Just about to pick it up, gets hit oh. there by Orozco, but uh, if he hadn't been to, able uh, to hold on to, to that, that would have been a vertical, completed. right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, good work there by Patrick, creating enough space there but to enable Tanaguchi to get in at the corner. He had that locked down. Tape issue for Tanaguchi. So correct me if I'm wrong, but sleeves are not equipment problems, right? Sleeves aren't. No, they shouldn't be. Because um, we had one in the... Uh, yeah. Earlier game, the USA game, and uh, yes, like, I don't think you can do that. We had one in the New Zealand Sw Switzerland game as well, and like, uh, the uh, and they pulled the up a sleeve in like two seconds, so it's yeah. not like it disadvantaged them. No, and uh, the re the referees told told them the player uh, don't call that again. Yeah. Next time, I won't yeah. be so forgiving. Quite, I think that's the same uh, conversation that he had <laughs> with Wheeler. Yeah. And that's the way it should be. I mean, you've got the best referees in the world here this, yeah. this week. And that's uh, the plan. Yeah. The best teams, the best, best coaches, the, the best referees, and best, best officials. Oh, Orozco got his hand in there. He did. Joppa yeah. last to touch it, and uh, Joppa Tanaguchi. Gets the turnover. Ryan Gaudet says uh, to the Colombian bench, please move back and make a bit of space for us. They do have a lot of room. I, want, I don't know why they're up so close. I guess they're excited. Yeah, there is plenty of space there. They, they, sometimes they don't you don't need have to that, be that close. Right? Yeah, sometimes it, 
you're pressed up against the line, you don't really have much of a choice. But. Penalty try, says Liam Costello. Also does a lot of basketball refereeing, Liam. Bruno, number three, trying to get out of there. Yeah. Every time I think he's out. There are timeouts available. Yeah. Not anymore. Nope. Uses up Brazil's last one. And the table officials will signal a closed, a clenched fist to the referees to let them know that Brazil have no more timeouts remaining. Gets out this time. Yeah, finds Taniguchi. It's a race to the line. Vanegas cuts him off. Vargas gives him a little push towards the line, and he gets over. His chair was sliding to the right toward that cone, but he had enough forward momentum to get across before he got there. Venegas just kept pushing, pushing, pushing. I always say wheelchairs don't go sideways, but sometimes <laughs> they do. Yes, they definitely do. Not necessarily the uh, <laughs> the desired direction by the, uh, no, the person in control. The user is usually yeah. not happy about that. No. <laughs> so we're approaching 90 odd seconds remaining in the game, and it's uh, Colombia by 52 to 35. Very strong display by by them. 10 seconds up uh, before the ball was inbounded and touched by a player. So it'll be Colombian ball at the sideline once more. So far, this has been a great tournament. It's well run, well organized. You know, I, you got to give credit to Parasport Denmark and uh, absolutely the community of Vila for what they've done here. Um, I, I can understand why they asked them if they wanted to host after the the, uh, the European Europeans. Championship that yeah, was here. Yeah, very successful tournament in 2019. Uh, 2014, the Worlds were here in Unser, uh as well. So, you know, they, this is a nation that, uh, you know, is really looking to uh, to support para sport and uh, wheelchair yeah. rugby in particular. I, I, Interestingly, Norway is the same way. The town that we were in, uh, you know, they built this facility with the intention of providing recreation and support opportunities to everyone. And the communities behind it, they paid for it. Uh, pretty amazing. It was, because it, it's that, that Norwegian facility w was capable of hosting, you know, much bigger events, uh, sure. international level events, national level events, um, but still also providing for the uh, the local community. Uh, so they've got they've gone way beyond what was needed just for the local people. And uh, oh, great hit there from uh, Vargas on Patrick. And well, Colombia come up with the ball once can more. Can I change my vote? <laughs> <laughs> on the back of that hit alone. Yeah, he's had a tremendous game, Vargas. Oh, oh, spinning foul. Penalty try. Yeah, good refereeing that. Yeah. Yeah, he he was unobstructed to the line. There yeah. was no way he wouldn't call yeah. that a penalty goal. And they're not it's try. not as if it's a close game and the clock is a is nope. a, is, a, is an issue. If, if as a referee you think that you make a decision right, do I put the guy in the bin and give the team a new 40 seconds so that they can control the clock because it's a tight game sure. or or do I just award the penalty try? And uh, that was exactly the right decision. Yet oh. another turnover from uh, uh, Roscoe has come now up can with I a lot of those. Uh, <laughs> a lot the, the, of those today. He's, honestly, uh, Colombia, uh, they've had such a great game. Mm. I mean, really, everyone has played well that's been out there. And, you know, there are flashes of brilliance. There have been some really good things that are happening for Brazil, but... You know, the turnovers have killed them. Orozco 
Calls timeout oh. with 14 seconds. They've got three, so he can yeah. wind that clock down. He can, yes. Now the only question is, do they run the clock out or do they try and work that final try? They'll try and score the final try. Every of team always Be does. Because how many game situations do you have to try and score that final try? Mm. You have to do it when you can. Although in this situation, that wasn't, uh, wasn't the kind of play they intended to run. I love winding teams up when we've got a massive differential and the other the team on the losing end has got the ball with five seconds ago and I call last try the winner. <laughs> the number of guys that, that think, is he serious? Is he serious? What, what do you mean, ref? We can't do that. You probably don't want to say that at this level. <laughs> no, not at this level. But, uh, then there'd be a formal protest. Particularly, and... <laughs> particularly in fives games. So, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I gotta try that sometimes. I mean, I, I probably have a hard time against guys, guys who are uh, paras, but you know. I know the game. Yeah. Of course, that's with Patrick four on the end of it. Five. Can he get in before the clock runs Plenty out? Time. Yeah, no problem whatsoever. And now Orozco getting ready to Orozco launch it. Launch. He's got Venegas. This game no. could go on forever. Uh. Oh, and he doesn't <laughs> touch it. So the clock should not have started. We'll see it go back. It, it shouldn't have started, no. But, uh, That's a correctable error, right? They know what time the last try was scored. They do, but I'm not sure they're going to bother because uh, it's not going to make a difference. No. Not with the score at 54-36. Uh, but we are at 54, World Championships. 36. Let's just see if Brazil asks for it. <laughs> nope, they're going to run the play, but they're not going to worry about the clock. Doesn't look like it at this so, moment. Bruno. They were thinking about it. Three. Oh, they have. No, they have. They've set it back up to four. Oh, okay. And that, that's unfortunate. They were in a great position, but all that time that it took to get the clock right, and while they were figuring out who's going to throw, and the they didn't have the opportunity. Away. And that's the end of the game. A resounding win for Colombia over Brazil 54 points to 36. So bragging rights. Uh, in South America, go to the men in blue, at men least and for women today. in blue, at least for today, yes. But uh, they'll dine out on that for a, for a good while. A couple of days until they play again, if they play yep. again. If they don't play again, then they can, they can ride that one until uh, the next big tournament, which for them could be any time. So here comes man of the match. Player, player of the match, sponsored by Grundfos. Sponsored by who? Grundfos, one of the uh, one of the sponsors of the event. And uh, Charlie Neme, also known as Carlos Montoya. Uh, Get... Many many players worthy of consideration for that. They certainly were. But. Uh, it's a low point. It's always good to see a low point player getting uh, player of the match. He, and he recognizing the, the efforts and the uh, work they do off the absolutely. ball. Absolutely. And a lot of times you don't notice no. uh, the, the picks that are making that guy look so good yes. out there. Yeah. Yeah, Roscoe uh, would have been, no, and Vargas would have been nowhere near as efficient if it hadn't been for the work of the no. low point players. And, and either of them wouldn't have been as efficient without the other. They were to help too. Yeah. Orozco so fast, drawing attention. Early in the game, Orozco drew a double for a lot, and it left Vargas alone. And then Vargas was playing good defense. So was Orozco. So 